too Italian today. Oh, plain. That seems about right. Give it four seconds and the dog across the road will start going ballistic. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel for another video. Today is the Q&A that I mentioned last Wednesday. But first I just wanted to thank everybody for their incredibly loving and supportive kind words this week. Um, again, I'm not going to go into details about what the family emergency was. It's um, sort of continuous, so uh, we don't really have much resolution yet, but it's looking very positive. So let's get into it with your questions, guys. The first one being, Mia, please can you help me? I want to treat my acne that occurred because of my eating disorder. What should I do? I have spoken a lot about the fact that I suffered from rosacea as a result of my bulimia. Um, rosacea is not acne, it's actually a completely separate skin condition that appears like acne but is actually incredibly dry. I can only suggest that you go and do what I went and did and that is going and seeing a skin specialist. I tried many different ways to cure it myself. Um, but going and seeing a skin specialist and also going into recovery at the same time meant that once the antibiotics that I was given by the skin specialist started to take effect, because I wasn't binging and purging anymore, there was no reason for it to reoccur. Next question is from the lovely Joelle and she said, I have a question. It's something that I've been struggling with a lot recently, how to deal with literal visible scars of the past. I'm one of many who had to deal with self-harm in addition to their eating disorder. However, my mental problems are a few years behind me now, but I just can't come to terms with my scars. I can't accept them. I can't think of them as warrior stripes or a representation of something that I've overcome. They just make me extremely sad and angry with my younger self. Any tips on how to overcome this? Joelle, I can empathize with this so much because I too self-harmed. I self-harmed on and off from the ages of 19 to 20. I have scars on my forearm, I have scars on my upper arms, I have scars on my upper thighs, I have scars all over from self-harm and I completely feel you. It is something that I can't undo and I understand that people are proud of it and they call them warrior stripes and I think that's fabulous. I think that's great that people can embrace that. I'm someone who chooses to look at it as an inevitability. I was sick, I was in pain, I was coping and doing the very best that I could and I think it's less about being proud of it, it's about forgiving yourself for it. Forgiveness is not that it's okay or that you know you feel fabulous about it. Forgiveness is accepting that it couldn't have been any different and with what you had at that time, with the coping skills that you had, with what you were going through, it couldn't have been any different and you say that you've got those mental issues that are behind you that was something which may have triggered or prompted what you needed to go through to make sure you never had to do that again forgive yourself for it don't have to you know be a champion for it but just forgive yourself for it and try to find some peace with it so the next question is from anonymous hi there i'm currently in my second year of treatment for an eating disorder mainly anorexia but binging makes the occasional appearance and i'm finding myself really resisting treatment and wanting to be left alone what should i do to combat this it sounds to me like you are concerned that you want to isolate yourself and be left alone and not continue treatment, which is probably why you're writing to me in the first place. So I think you kind of already know the answer and that is that you need to stay in treatment. And sometimes your instinct is warped by the eating disorder or your mental illness. It tells you the opposite of what you really need in order for it to survive and for your treatment not to be successful. Is yeah, go against what it's trying to tell you because it sounds like it's not in your best interest. Another one from Anon over on Tumblr. Hi Mia, I've been following you for a while and love your videos, thank you. I'd love to hear how you ended up coping with gaining weight after recovery. This is what I'm worried about the most, even though I know it's essential. Thanks so much in advance. Anon, I, like everyone, struggled with the idea of gaining weight. That's probably the number one thing that people assign to what they're concerned about when they go into recovery. And I don't even think it just comes down to the aesthetic or the physical discomfort. It signifies and represents a loss of control, that now this is really letting go of the thing that basically kept you in check and kept everything where you needed it to be to cope and get through day to day. I started to explore other aspects of who I was. I was defined for so long by how thin I was, by how I looked, by how I was perceived in the world physically. And I started to 
move into different parts of who I was and, and realize that I had to fill those spaces and become a fully functioning human being with abilities and with a sense of humor and a personality. And that was how this channel was created. That's how I started writing again after years of not writing anything creatively. That's That gives me life, my writing. So I think it was definitely in conjunction with speaking to my psychologist, just working out what kind of person I wanted to be and taking the focus away from being thin and thinking that that was my worth and that that was the sum of my part. And I would be lying if I said that my physical appearance never bothers me, but it isn't the main driver of why I eat well and why I exercise. It's because I want to be healthy and I want to be in the best possible position to do all the things that the other parts of my identity are meant to do and be and that I want to be a good friend and sister and daughter and employee and I want to extend my, my career and I want this channel to grow and I want to help you guys as best I can. So I think a big part of it is just realizing how unimportant the weight is, how unimportant the what it represents really is. Oh, I liked this one. This one was from a non on Tumblr. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? Will you still be making videos? Where will you live, etc.? Where do I want to be in 10 years? Um, yes, I would still love to be making videos. I would love for this channel to grow. Um, I would love to start moving more into body image and really talking to people and becoming an advocate for that. I would love to write about it, um, should there be an audience for it or a need for it. Um, and yeah, I just lo I'd love to really throw myself into that advocacy. If I could do this full time and speak to people about this full time, that would be an absolute dream come true. Uh, I would love to be living in New York um, or have lived in New York and some, at some point in those 10 years. That's something that's still on my list that I absolutely have to do before I die. I hope that I have got a great partner and I hope that I am still strong in my recovery. Hey Mia, I have a question for your Q&A video. Of all the recovery advice you can give to someone, what's the number one thing you tell people when they're going into recovery? There's two things and they're quotes that I expand on. And the first one is fall down seven times, stand up eight. I love that saying because failure is not something to be afraid of. It means you've tried at something and you've learnt something from that failure. And so whenever you get to the point where you can get up and stand up, there's a reason for it because you've learned from the past failures. You've learned from your past mistake. You can't always get things right the first time because you knew at it. You've never done it before. It's like saying, I am going to win at recovery, even though I've never done it before. Just like I can never play a guitar and pick it up with no lessons and just start like going crazy on it and blowing people away and become like an international superstar. Not going to happen. And the other is nothing is permanent. Good days are impermanent like bad days are impermanent. Weight is impermanent. Um, heartbreak is impermanent. Failure is impermanent. Um, success is impermanent. So there's a, there's a yin and yang to all of it. There's a good and there's a bad to that saying, but it also means that everything will pass. Nothing is going to stick and be terrible forever. Um, this is one that I got over Messenger on Tumblr and this person wanted to remain anonymous. Did you, do you ever miss your ED? What do you do other than journaling to keep from acting on ED behaviours? Also, I never know what to eat and have had an attendance in... Talk Mia! Also, I never know what to eat and have had an attendance in past recovery attempts. Any suggestions? So your first question, did you or do you ever miss your ED? I didn't. I hated my eating disorder. By the time I went and got help, I absolutely hated it. I can't remember one time when I thought, oh, I wish I could pick you back up again. Did I often think that maybe I was going to stumble down the path of going back into past behaviours? Absolutely. I went through stress. I went through heartbreak. I went through all kinds of situations where I thought, oh, this could be the kicker. This could be the relapse moment. It was just looking at the time that I had spent that was well what? It was looking at the time when I that I had spent being well and even if that was two months or six months or a year it was like that is worth so much more to me than one second of relief and 
remembering that that relief is a lie. Uh, and your other question, I never not to eat and have had Anna tendencies in past recovery attempts. Any suggestions? I would go and speak to somebody who is equipped to help you through that transition period. There's a lot of different programs that people go on. So yeah, I, I would just go and speak to somebody about that um, who can help you to navigate nutritionally what you should be doing. How do you make your family trust in you again? Mine doesn't and I would like to hear your advice on that. So Beata, first and foremost, you can't make anyone do anything or get to a point that you want them to be at other than to continuously be consistent with your behavior and be consistent with being honest. Um, that's a really unfortunate part of this eating disorder is that the eating disorder, not you, is incredibly dishonest. I wouldn't say my family don't trust me. Like I said, they don't trust the eating disorder. Even only a couple of months ago, my mum and I were eating dinner and she said, do you like enjoy your food now? Like, do you feel like you can enjoy it? You can like get through a meal and you don't want to throw up. And that's like, I've been in recovery for three years, completely, no relapse, continuously for three years. And they're still concerned. And like when I got a PT and I was like, guys, this is the best thing for me to do because this person understands my history. They are a professional. I've made it very clear. This is not about weight loss. This is about health and getting fit and toned. And they're still a little bit, oh, are you sure? Are you sure that's you? Are you sure that's not your anorexia or your bulimia? So I get it. And yeah, just you've got to be honest and you've got to be consistent. Um, and it will come. It will come. This one I've had a lot. This thing seems like a weird one, but this one I've had a lot. So I'm going to answer it here. And that is, are you related to Elle Taylor? I didn't know who Elle Taylor was until I'd been asked this for about the seventh time. And she is a YouTuber who's a lot younger than me. I do not know Elle Taylor. I am not related to Elle Taylor. I don't know her. So no, I'm not related to Elle Taylor. So this one's from Laura and it's about intuitive eating, which was one of my first videos actually. And I might do an update on that because the first one was <laughs> horrible. It was horrible. God. My first videos were as embarrassing as I'm probably gonna find these videos in about a year's time. So Laura said, I love intuitive eating, but there are times I slip and start thinking a lot about my body shape by obsessing in front of the mirror or seeing if my clothes are looser. This slip up leaves me to restrict a bit and then overeat. The wonderful thing is that thanks to intuitive eating, it's never too severe and I get back on track instantly. But my question is, how can I avoid this pitfall? Why does my mind go back to obsessing how my body looks? I get impatient because I gained a lot of weight due to binge eating and I guess I want to see a result. Intuitive eating is a slow process. It's really, really slow and it's best if it's not in pursuit of weight loss. Um, it's really about leveling out. It's about listening to your body's hunger cues and what you are craving so that you can satiate that craving without putting it off and putting it off until it turns into a binge. So I guess the mindset is what drives intuitive eating. If you are having obsessive thoughts about how you look, etc., if you find that you're body checking and you want results in that sense, I would, yeah, just be cognizant of, of your motivation for intuitive eating because it's really just to take the focus off how, how you look and it's more about nourishment and satiating yourself and feeling healthy and feeling well. Anonymous said, I saw all the criticism you got on your bikini body video. How do you deal with it and keep going? The criticism isn't a problem. I, because I had criticism about those programs in my video. Criticism is fine. Criticism means that we have a different perspective. People are criticism of things, people are criticism? People are critical of things that I do on this channel. It's the way that they present that criticism, if it's constructive, if it's respectful, if it's not personal or threatening, then it's criticism. Uh, otherwise it's nasty and it's horrible. I am getting better at focusing more on the positive, but I don't want to become one of these people who is blind to the people who do disagree with me or do have a different perspective because that makes you a narcissist if you just choose to completely block out that people are like, hang on a minute, that's not cool or I don't agree with you there. The threatening stuff, the cruel stuff, the nasty stuff, the stuff that pertains to my family, I have no tolerance for that and it is scary. And I've got a couple over on Instagram. So this one's from Patricia and she said, I just wanted to ask, do you have any advice you can recommend for 
trying to get over a relapse from anorexia. I have been in and out of recovery from both anorexia and bulimia at different stages of my life so many times from when I was 16. I'm now 22 and I don't want to feel trapped anymore. I'm sorry, I'm just not sure what to do anymore. Patricia, I don't know what your background is. You say that you've been in and out of recovery. I don't know if that's self um, styled, I guess, or if you have sought professional help. Uh, but I would go back to what I said about the top advice about recovery um, quotes that I said, fall down seven times, stand up eight. And I know that it feels like you just keep falling down, falling down, falling down. But every time you fall down and get back up, you're learning something. You're getting a little bit further along. So I would absolutely encourage you to go and seek that help again, to put your hand up, to get into maybe the recovery community over on Tumblr, which I have said many times helped to save my life. I know that I've got a couple of subscribers like Punk who always says yes, hallelujah for the Tumblr community. The last one is from the lovely Malia. My message for the Q&A is how do I come to terms with me being accepting that maybe school and other things are not the most important factor in my life and going into hospital and receiving help from people is. I'm really struggling with accepting this right now. Any advice would be great. Thanks. Actually, this resonates with something that I've been going through with my family, um, the family emergency that I've been going through for the last week. And that is that my advice to this person who has not been well, when they kept saying, but I can't, I, I don't feel like I have the time or the capacity to get better because of my job, because of my home life, because of this, because of that. And it was like, no, no, no. There is none of that without your health. There is no option to be able to do that and succeed at it and enjoy it if there is no health underpinning it. Your mental health, your physical health is the most important thing. It is the foundation on which you can go to school, that you can be happy, that you can be successful, that you can like yourself and love yourself and treat yourself well. You can continue to struggle and try to do all the things while you're sick until you can't do them anymore. Or you can take some time out, rectify the mental health situation, and find that you are so much better equipped, that you are setting yourself up to succeed. If you don't go and get the help that you need, you are setting yourself up for failure. So as boring as this constant advice is to you guys, you must go and get help. Those of you who write to me and say, should I go and get help? Should I go and get do this? The answer of course is always go and get help, go and be well, go and be better, go and be happy. If you want better, go get better because you deserve to succeed and you deserve to feel good and you deserve to be able to go to school effectively, do your job effectively, be successful, be happy in your family, be happy in your relationships. And with an eating disorder, that's not possible. It's a 100% fail rate with an eating disorder. They never help. They, ne they never make anything better. They're never the solution. I get very ranty about that subject. I apologize, but it's just because I want you guys to be well and be happy and be successful because you're all such smart, funny, compassionate girls and guys and you deserve the best and the only way you're going to get the best is if you get better. So guys that's all the questions that we had for this week. Guys come and hit subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. You can come and find me on Twitter and Instagram under what Mia did next. I will see you guys this Wednesday with our Warrior Wednesday video. In the meantime much love and take care. Bye guys.